today's edition of the ongoing study on the fivefold. Uh, we thank Elohim for his grace that has enabled us to go through so much lessons and today in the 31st of the lessons as per the arrangement of you know the, the book that was published on the website a chapter has been added you know we are now in the epilogue series we finish looking at the individual folds apostles prophets evangelists pastors and teachers and if you've not been with us all this while please you know there is opportunity for you on facebook if you are not in the master class you can also go to uh, youtube where you type through kingdom life that's a channel which is the library about 900 videos are there but if you put the hit the subscribe button and you also hit the alert button the bell whenever a new video is posted every day you're going to be notified and by the grace of the lord you hit the playlist the series of lessons we've done so far will come forth today we're in the epilogue series and we part of what we're looking today is the grand purpose of the fivefold by way of reminder this week all the lessons are just to close out this very important cause and i want to encourage you don't be among those who take the word of elohim lightly or cherry pick it if you really want to make it we are going to be people who press in into every truth in the holy scriptures whatever is written let it be made flesh in us whatever that is written let's take it on board let it renew our minds let it transform our hearts whatever is written let us be people who ask the Lord for grace to do. Let's not be among those who can conveniently wave off any provision of the Holy Writ for any reason under the sun. Even if you are struggling with anything, why not go to the Lord and say, Lord, I'm struggling with this. Help me, Lord. I know this is your word. This is your truth. But Lord, I have not attained. Help me. Such a person is going to stand before Elohim in greater standing than one who would just do as if what is written is not written. I want to say to this to you all, the Lord's grace is still available to lead us into the fullness of his word, into his truth. And the Lord's grace is available to empower us to walk by the truth, to live by the truth. And if in any area you're having issues, for instance, if you're one of those struggling with the concept of the fivefold, you think it will scatter your church. If it's your church, they will scatter it. But if it's his church, that's exactly what will give it stability. It's exactly what will give the church stability because the fivefold, they operate as five fingers of the same hand, the same palm, the same hand. Yeshua is a hand under getting all. He gave apostles he gave prophets he gave evangelists he gave pastors he gave teachers none can operate outside of him and each of them is wired with grace to work cooperatively with the other fools on that note let's pray father in heaven there's no one like you thank you for the privilege of your truth wash us with your truth and father wash us indeed and prepare your church not to be caught up what you are showing is so amazing. The end of all things is closer than when we first believe. Help us to be that Omega Church, that church of the wise virgins you ordain us to be. Make us to be a church inclined to know and to do your will. Let your grace make it possible. Thank you for answer. In Yeshua's name we pray. Amen. Brothers and sisters, Let's be forget the first thing we want to say today in this teaching is that the church has a divine master plan unless you are doing something else. If you are part of this church, there's a master plan that brought you and I into being. And that master plan is something we are called to live it out. Something for which he recruited Saul of Tarsus and commissioned him as Paul to go forth. And outline how that plan brings the Gentiles and the Jews together into one new man. And the church is to be led in such a way that it produces results. And brothers and sisters, that Paul was committed to the operation of the church, how the church is bettered, the description of the church, 
how it should operate, how Satan will fight it, understanding of his timeline, what it will be like when he returns as per Ephesians 5, 26, 27. So there is no way anyone can engage in the church from a New Testament context without understanding the Pauline epistles. And so it's so important that we have time to study the epistle to the Romans, the first and second Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, first and second Timothy, Titus, Philemon, the book of Hebrews. These whole things about the church are fully encapsulated in them. And so writing in first Corinthians chapter three, Paul describes himself as a wise master builder who received the architectural drawings of the church from Yeshua concerning how the church will be built. And he went on to admonish, as we have told you severally, that scripture is very critical. 1 Corinthians 3, 10 to 15. At the end of the day, all of us, whether we are apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers, or bishops, or deacons, or elders, whatever we are, at the end of the day, our works will be put through the fire of his glory. And that fire of his glory is fueled by his word. So his word stokes the fire. And at the end of the day, whatever we do will be evaluated vis-a-vis -vis his master plan. So central to the master plan of Yeshua for his church is that it will be led by five categories of office, gifts, and functions. And when we say led, we mean served. Served. Apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers who will release grace in them and in their folds in harmony, which brings about synergy, so that when the saints receive that which comes from the apostle, the prophet, the evangelist, the pastor, the teacher, they mature and grow to take their place as a royal priesthood after the order of Melchizedek in the earth realm. So each of these folds, he has released a measure of himself. They are not to operate alone. So the church will not remain immature and inadequate. And brothers and sisters, he deliberately made the concept of the fivefold a collective, lest preachers try to build human empires around their apostles, around their charisma, or their specific office gifts. And each of the fivefold was to receive a good understanding of who Yeshua is, his kingdom, as detailed in the Bible, and proclaim him and the kingdom with conviction and power by the grace given from Holy Spirit. So, in, a, in other words, the church of Yeshua will be inadequate and less than what it is ordained to be anywhere and any time the fivefold is rejected or is dysfunctional or absent. And that's why, brothers and sisters, in the fourth century, Satan went for the juggler. He aimed for the juggler of the church when he sidetracked the true gospel of the kingdom, chopped it aside. And part of what he did was he took away the fivefold in that fourth century, took away the Holy Bible that every believer or every person is not entitled to, is the, is the priest who will read it and whatever they tell is whatever it is. And he took away all the things that would make the church safe in the hands of Holy Spirit, he took them away. And then he began to enforce a humanistic system of religiosity, which involves going into a building on certain holy days to do some rituals, which involves the marriage of church and state that created what is called Mystery Babylon. John saw it in his epistle, I mean his red book of Revelation, Mystery Babylon, the union of church and state. He saw it. And in this state, the fivefold will be declared as obsolete. So that in the new leadership structure, it will be more like a pyramid, an organization not organizing. And brothers and sisters, in spite of the Protestant Reformation, which was done through Martin Luther in 1570, I mean, um, 502 years ago, or 503 years ago, rather, you know what? In spite of that Reformation, the truth is this, that the Protestant movement and its arms, charismatic, Pentecostal, evangelical, has largely neglected to find out what 
Yeshua gave as the pattern of his church, what they are doing is from their protest point. In other words, the root of the protestant is now Rome, and that is a very sad thing. And brothers and sisters, we want to say this to you. The day is coming when the Lord is going to make sure that his remnant, whether they are in the Pentecostal, charismatic, evangelical, whether they are even in the traditional Orthodox churches, but they are truly his remnant, according to the election of grace, the day is coming when all the remnants are going to be invested in one thing, to find out what Yeshua wanted his church to be, what he wanted his church to do, to find out the structure of his church and to be his church, not something they enter, not something they go to on certain holy days, but what they are in reality. So brothers and sisters, in this closing chapter of the human age, Satan has struck with two more. So it's no longer only what happened, you know, in the fourth century. Satan has struck with two things. We have told you one of them. One of them is the pseudo kingdom movement that says preach the kingdom. Don't preach Jesus. Don't preach Yeshua. It's not important. Just preach the power of the kingdom, the glory of the kingdom, the wealth of the kingdom. And a lot of believers fell for this. Because of one man who pushed the button, who pressed the button so much on this, and even though he's no more on this side of eternity, the people he deceived are still clinging to that theory of preach the kingdom, don't preach Jesus. Now, I said it many times, and the Lord said we emphasize this so that people will get it. <laughs> Yeshua is the center and circumference of the kingdom. The kingdom is his. You can't brush him aside. If the kingdom is greater than him, then he's not Yeshua HaMashiach. He's not God made flesh. He's not incarnate Elohim. But he is the center and circumference of the kingdom. The kingdom is his. The power is his. The glory is his. So anyone that tells you to downplay preaching of Yeshua is a liar. What he's trying to do is to make you to hold to a false kingdom. Why do we say so? Salvation is in no order but in Yeshua HaMashiach. In his name, you have to believe on him before you are translated from the king, you know, kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of Elohim. Without him, no entrance. So if he's the doorway, the, the way, the truth, and the life, then we cannot shunt him aside. The second theology that has been developed in the past you know, 50 years is called dominionalism. Now, this is not the same as the dominion mandate of man. The dominion mandate of man talks about what the Lord has done. He didn't create us to be religious figures. He gave us authority to exercise authority over things he created. And when the Lord redeemed, he gave us the ability to resist Satan, push him back and exercise the mandate of our Father, ensure that the will of our Father is done anywhere he plants us. But dominionalism is a twist on this. Is its theory that, listen, it doesn't say this one. You don't need to wait for Jesus again to return. You don't need to wait for his return. No, 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 no. Let's take over now. Okay, we take over the military. We take over government. We take over politics. We take over the economy. We take over the sports. We take over entertainment. When we take over these mountains of society, then the kingdom has been established on earth. Brothers and sisters, this one is even more dangerous because it appeals to the pristine instincts of man. Man wants to achieve things and succeed in things. But listen to this. And I say this to you with all the capacity, the moral suasion the Lord has vested in this soul. If you believe that theory, you'll be like the foolish virgins who will go to sleep. You sleep upon what you think you have achieved. But brothers and sisters, the Lord doesn't want us to miss for one moment the reality that all we can ever be on earth is what he wants us to be. And nothing can compare with what will happen in the world to come when it comes to establish the kingdom. That doesn't mean we should go and fold our hands. No. If you are waiting for his return, you are going to be diligent with your hand on the plow to be all the Lord has called you to be and do all he has called you to do. So, I mean, none of the dominionalists can accuse us of being lazy. 
Because by the grace of the Lord, from one location and one city, the Lord has done a massive work by His grace and is leading the load to make sure the remnant across the world have access to all they need to be what He called them to be. So, we are not among those who say, go and sit down and wait for the Lord to come. No, there is work to be done. He says, occupy till we come. But the danger of this one is that it's asking you to go and achieve this and achieve that. And then when you achieve it, you have arrived. No, we don't arrive until the king returns. The king went on a far country and to return. And until the day he returns, there is work to be done. And brothers and sisters, don't let anybody deceive you. That if you climb that mountain and climb that mountain and raise that flag and you have conquered it, then you have achieved the kingdom. No. Yesterday we told you, there's kingdom now. If the king is ruling in our hearts, it's kingdom now. Then all of us who the king is ruling in our hearts, we are kingdom nation. But then, there's what is called a manifest kingdom. A day the king will return to rule and reign and we will be co heirs and co-rulers with him. Men and brethren, danger locks when the fivefold is absent. When the fivefold is absent, the saints are in danger. Ephesians chapter 4, 11 to 16, let's remind you a few things the fivefold will do. Number one, perfect the saints to know who they are in Yeshua and who is in them. That's part of their job. If you check Ephesians 4, 11 to uh, 16. Number two, equip the saints to know their roles in the kingdom. To know their roles in the kingdom and to do that which is what they are called. Three, enable the saints to play their assigned roles in building up and in defying one another. That is the church. Because where the fivefold is and the saints are activated, each one doing his part, the body is edified. You see no one struggling for office, for recognition, because if when we flow in our gift and calling, honestly, there's no competition. Because everybody is bespoke. Everybody is unique. Everybody does what they do. Everybody can do what they do. Even among husband and wife, even in families, everybody is bespoke. So where the fivefold does is work, you discover who you are, you pursue it, and you pursue it not for yourself. Every gift and calling is not for the one who is the vessel. This is vessel of water. So, the vessel is for the purpose of ministering to others. So the gift in me is for you. The gift in you is for me and for other people. When we realize that there's no more competition, there's no more striving, there's no more what they call pull him down syndrome, PhD syndrome. No. Everybody does his work. The body is 85. Number four, when saints receive ministry from the fivefold, they come to a place of unity in faith. Regardless of their racial backgrounds, regardless of their social status, their tribes, their ages, their gender, their congregations, or their locations, the church is one. How does it mean? If all we do, I mean, the reason why we have very beautiful, you know, flow with our brethren from GPLC Kilgore is that we, we the same truth. The same truth that we are teaching in London is what they are teaching in Texas. So, we all, the officers, the, the brethren, the ministers, is the same truth. And also why we flow with other brethren from across, you know, like Apostle Sherry in North Carolina, Apostle Dennis and Pastor David and Mr. Michelle in North Carolina, Apostle Fred Harris in, in Detroit, Michigan, you know, and, you know, teachers, uh, Apostle Sandra Jenkins, other people, you know, in Illinois, teacher Stephanie Foster, Apostle Geneva Young, uh, uh, Pastor Joyful Judy, Minister Dion Maxwell in uh, Indiana, and, you know, people like Apostle Lotta Bell, Apostle Atonet in uh, Arizona, Name it. We believe the same thing. Even though we have different ministry names and, and different locations. And that is what unity is. Unity is let's go to the stadium and be there. Then we are in unity. No. We believe the same thing. We mind the same thing. We pursue the same thing. Brothers and sisters, number seven, I mean number six, uh, uh, rather five, the saints <clears throat> begin to be mature and measure up to the fullness of the stature of Yeshua. Number six, with this development, immaturity will be removed, and the saints will no longer be tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine. People who have come to deceive are not going to be build them up. Are going, they are not going to confuse them. 
It doesn't matter how sweet tongue they are. It doesn't matter what they preach on YouTube. And it sounds so powerful. But because saints are mature, they can discern error right through all the mass of words. Number seven, saints who are built up will be able to discern when people want to make money off them, trying to make them up with prophecy or whatever, to make money off them, to do fundraising, because they want to build this, they want to do that, and they want to craftily make money off them. They can design it when they are mature. And number eight, saints are able to mature to the point where they can freely receive grace and gift and callings from others and release to others and everybody is edified. These things are all in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11 to 16. So, men and brethren, in this situation, what are responsibility of ministers of the gospel? All pastors and leaders, we've said it before, we need to re-emphasize it, all pastors, all leaders must recognize the reality that saints are members of Yeshua, not of the minister. They are members of Yeshua. And we must get out of this Babylonian concept of my member, my church. No, they are in congregations we are opportune to serve as leaders. It's a privilege and we must not regard them as our properties or slaves to feed them with whatever we want. No, he said you give them pastors after his heart. So we don't just give them whatever comes to our mind. No, it's the word. Even if we think we're inspired in something, if it contradicts the word, we throw it away. They are head and savior has already determined what he wants to feed them with and how he wants to build them up through the fivefold. He has determined what a saint needs to receive from you know, the pastor, from the teacher, from the evangelist, from the prophet, and from the uh, uh, apostle that they are connected with. And any minister who refuses to follow the divine plan is unqualified to lead the saints who are the remnant of Elohim. So necessity becomes upon of every minister to do these things. Number one, as we said, do a gift or deed from time to time. What is my gifting? What's my calling? What fold am I operating in? And then, as we said in one of the lessons, you can prayerfully receive from the Lord a minister to connect with, align with, for interpersonal relationship with gifts and callings that are for edification, accountability, and support. In other words, what you don't have, you must. You need to prayerfully know who has it and who flows with you and who is, you know, has character of Yeshua that you can bring in to help to nurture the flock. And it's not something, this is not rocket science. It's not something too big to do. Number two thing that you need to do is to be connected with a fellowship where these folds are there and you can tap into that. You see people, you see them in conferences, in meetings, in interaction, you see the grace in them and the Holy Spirit will remind you about that grace and you can also tap into. And while they are in the network, they tap into you, you tap into them and everybody is built up. Brothers and sisters, by being part of such a company of ministers who are faithful and through the word of Elohim and his end time agenda, you are properly nourished as an individual and by the grace of the Lord, the people who are, you know, you are leading, they too can be enjoy, they too can enjoy the folds that are not in the house. And we say to this that also it's important that depending on your specific needs, you know, you may have a mentor who the Lord will give grace to, to see what is in you and encourage you to go for it and challenge you to not limit yourself to what you know today, but tells you about the potentials therein and the challenge can lead you to break out of whatever limitations you thought you had. But ultimately, brethren, number four, every pastor and overseer, the best and most productive course of action is to invest in the training, in the teaching, training, equipping, activation, and release of saints who the Lord has brought together, who may have all these codes, and they didn't know it. But through training, 
they come to a time where they snap out of their limitations and they begin to show grace. And as they show grace, you, you affirm them, you encourage them. Let's say you're in the ministry, you don't have an evangelist and there's none so far. And then you begin to teach about the Great Commission. There's a resource on the Great Commission and discipleship. And you begin to teach on it. And that person is challenged and begins to practice what he's had. You see the person passionate, going out to the marketplace, going out to the central business district, going out to different areas, going out to malls, preaching and bringing his souls productively. You begin to follow that person up encourage that person and with time you affirm that person with laying on of hands and call the person an evangelist bring that person to leadership he may be young he may not have been 20 years old in ministry or 10 years in ministry but if that grace is there don't deny that grace if you wait for people to be perfect before you can utilize them you may wait forever so the key is remember that people are called and they be, begin life as baby apostles, baby prophets, baby evangelists, baby pastors, baby teachers. Get, give people a chance. Encourage them. Correct them. Where necessary, rebuke them. The Bible said those who make, who err publicly, rebuke them publicly. That's what Paul told Timothy. And if somebody cannot take your rebuke, that person is not part of the ship assigned to you. Period. If somebody will be so angry with the rebuke and so much concerned about the ego, you've already seen a clear sign that this one is not the part of the flock the Lord has given to you. Brothers and sisters, we must throw out of the window some of the things we learn from secular humanism. So we now have church where nobody is rebuked, nobody is corrected because everybody, every leader is working on eggshell. You don't want to offend anybody. Listen, that leads to a false sense of growth. A leader should and if you have not done it, brothers and sisters, if you are serving with any overseer, call up your overseer and say, you know what? I want to give you permission to correct me if I go wrong. I want to give permission to rebuke me if I go wrong. I want to give you permission to help me not to miss eternity. Eternity is too, is too critical to be missed. If you see me do anything that is off, please call me. Even if I feel um, offended initially, Please stand your ground. That's why you are, I mean, that's why you are in my life. And so, brothers and sisters, having spoken about, let's talk about responsibility of saints, the reality of Ephesians 4, 11 to 16. Brothers and sisters, listen. On the last day, all saints will give account of the life Yahweh gave them in Yeshua. They will give account of the salvation they freely received. They give account of his providential care and for the gifts and callings they were redeemed to exercise for building up the other saints and contribute to the health of the body. They give account for how faithfully they served as ambassadors of Yeshua and how they effectively participated in the Great Commission. No saint can plead ignorance <laughs> because the Bible is there. Some of us have two, three Bibles. Sometimes I don't know how we got some of these Bibles we got. Some were gifts, some were, you know, you know, bought. But look at that. And some people have more than us, far more. So nobody can plead he or she was ineffective because the pastor did not reveal the mind of Yahweh to me. Oh, nobody can say, hey, uh, I didn't know I needed a fivefold. Oh, I didn't know. And when you see the picture of your life, what could have been if you had received the fullness of the fivefold? How the Lord would have used you to affect the generation, it would be too late to repent. So, what do the saints need to do? Number one, by Holy Spirit's help and in prayer, the saint is to use the Holy Word in Ephesians 4, 11 to 16 and materials like this course we are doing on the fivefold to conduct an audit of the gifts and callings of their whoever is the overseer or pastor to ascertain how much of a fivefold is evident in them. If you are in one of these denominational churches where it's only pastor, it's your job to check out through the Holy Spirituals and resources like this. Is this man only a pastor? Or pastor and teacher, you need to know that it's your right. 
The one who is going to feed you is you are not supposed to just be an ignoramus. You don't care whether he is operating the fullness of grace of Elohim and all he's giving you is one grace, one full grace or two full grace. You are not supposed to be that if you are a remnant of Elohim. You need to mature to a time when you ask critical questions about the food, just as you choose the restaurants you go to, just as you choose the meal. They give you a menu, you check, you want this, you want that, you want that. You know, the brethren in Texas, they love wings, chicken wings and buffalo wings and all that. You choose all those things and some of the brethren, you know, you choose. So also, your spiritual diet should not be something you have no portion in. You just like that, just go like that. No. Number two. If the church operates in limited understanding on fivefold, and most denominational churches, Kojic, um, Baptist, Presbyterian, you know, Methodist, you know, Anglican, most of these denominational churches, big denominations, they operate in very limited understanding of fivefold. They may talk about it with tongue, but they don't really understand it. So, what do you do? You if they operate in, you know, limitation, maybe they have only one or two fold, your job is not to just jump out. No, that, that, those things were part of the old. Your first ad assignment is to ask Yeshua. Ask in prayer and the Father in the name of Yeshua to guide you concerning other vessels who have what those in-house leaders don't have. And whether you, you tap into it through television or social media, it's your responsibility to receive. And that doesn't mean you are going to be their member either. No. If the thing is of the kingdom, it's freely given, it's freely released. So you should be able to tap into grace from somebody who has what your leader doesn't have. Or what the leaders in the house don't have. Let's say denominational churches where just the pastor, then the other things are deacons. The ministers are just their decoration. They are not really doing anything. They don't preach. They don't go to the pulpit. They don't minister. They don't do anything. It's your job to find out, brothers and sisters, and to make sure you are not. So through means, you know, like you know, social media, Facebook, Skype, all the various things, you can fill up the missing measure of the office gifts. In your pastor, if you're in a denominational church, by locating those vessels and tap into, check the schedule, either of broadcast or whatever thing they do, or websites that are safe, that are good, they are not denominational, they are not, you know, designed to be, grab you to be their member, but to empower you. So the point is this, no sense should he sit easy in a place where she, he or she is not receiving training, is not being equipped, is not being activated in gifts of Holy Spirit, and does not have any opportunity to exercise any gift or calling. You're just going to be a lady sitting down like in a theater to observe. No. Brothers and sisters, the experience to be taught, trained, equipped, activated, and released to serve the Lord with, along with your leaders is a fundamental spiritual right. And so, feel free to be able to approach your pastor and request training. Require Approach your pastor and say, you listen, I found some, some element of grace in me. And please, can we have a training facility here so that I love this place. This is where the Lord called me. But I don't want to be an idle person. I don't want to be a lady, dormant lady. It's your job. If your pastor gets angry and throws you out, praise the Lord. The Lord will guide you. So if a local assembly leader, on the other hand, is totally close to or opposed to the ministry of the fivefold, totally close to it. A lot of ministers don't really understand the fivefold. So their attitude is they have the liberty. They don't tell you don't go to discover, don't go to be. They don't they don't stop you at all. Those people respect them and love them and whatever fold you are, work with them because their problem is ignorance. But there are those who are totally opposed to this fundamental truth of the new covenant. This fundamental truth of kingdom gospel. For those people, 
they've lost the moral authority to lead you if you're a remnant of Elohim. If somebody is leading you and denies the fivefold, rejects it, and say over his or her dead body, he will never allow such a thing. He will never allow a, an apostle, never allow a prophet, never allow an evangelist, that those people are troublemakers. Oh, no, 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 if you don't want me that, if somebody speaks that way, you know that you've come to the end of your walk with that person. If you truly want to be able to go to eternity, you know, standing before the Lord with heads really open that you didn't disappoint Elohim. Don't be ashamed of Yeshua at such times. Tell the people. In the book of Revelation chapter 18, we're told in verse 4 to 5, and I had another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not her plagues, for her sins have reached unto heaven, and Elohim I remember iniquities. This is Babylon. The time of judgment of Babylon is coming. Before then, the Lord said, come out from her. If you are in a Babylonian system, you are endangering your eternal life in the world to come. In a Babylonian system, you are hampering your ability to even be what the Lord has called you to be in this world. So on both sides of eternity, you are endangering your lives. So the inconvenient question since Pentecost and the polite epistles are these. Number one, in reality, is rejection of any, some, or all of the ascension of his gifts, the fivefold, does it amount to a rejection of Yeshua himself? Brothers and sisters, the answer is a resounding yes, because Yeshua is the fivefold. He is the apostle sent from heaven. He is the prophet whose words are defining history. He is the great evangelist who will seek for souls every time. He is the great shepherd of the sheep. He is also the great teacher, the great rabbi. And he gave this to his church, to mature his church, to be what he called it to be. The second question is this. Can any unit or part of the church be perfected if it operates outside the impartation of any, some, or the entire fivefold? Can they be perfected without the fivefold? The answer is no way. It's impossible. And so having said that, brothers and sisters, I want to encourage you. Please study all the lessons that have been done. By the grace of the Lord, we are making our remains. On YouTube, you can get them. And those of you who are Facebook addicts, we're going to make our remains for you to be able to get all of them on Facebook. Study all of them so that you can understand and be open. The Lord will give you much more. Whatever we can give you is but a, pro a proportion of what Elohim alone can give you by His Spirit. And whatever we're giving to you, check it out. We don't claim any special knowledge. It's just, we're just vessels through whom the Lord is bringing this forth because the Lord wants all over the world to activate the fivefold and to utilize the fivefold. And he said, don't be intimidated by anyone who is chauvinistic and say he can't receive you because he's a woman. That's their business. Just go on doing that. Don't go to seek endorsement of men. Just go on. It's a function. It's a service function. Serve diligently. Serve graciously. Serve with all your heart. Feed the people of Elohim according to the grace given to you. That grace is going to stand for you on the day of judgment. I didn't waste it. Paul said, by his grace I am who I am. And yet not I. But his grace that was in me. He walked more exceedingly abundantly above other people. So, brothers and sisters, not be intimidated when you are walking in the grace the Father has given to you. Esteem it highly. Pour it out for the benefit of other people. Some may recognize, some may not recognize. That's not what you are looking for. All you are looking for is fruit in them. Prayerfully, lift them up before the Lord that the word sown in their life, the virtue sown in their life will produce fruit. And by the grace of the Lord, it will be. Let's look at assignments for today. One, briefly mention the key things a minister should do in response to understanding of the truth of the absolute necessity of the fivefold. What are some of the key things a minister should do? You know, when you understand the truth about the fivefold, you know, what should you do? Number two, mention the key things an individual saint who is in the ministry that is close to the fivefold. What should that person do in, in response to understanding of the truth as presented in this course? Number three, this is going to be for those in the master class. 
you know, begin to prepare to write your feedback on this course, how it impacted you as an individual. Use a full scrap, an A4 sheet to write it. And if you are doing this live here with us in the live blogging, get ready. On Friday, you are going to write a feedback, you know, a more comprehensive feedback on all you've learned and you're going to write it. So this is basically what we have for today. We have four more lessons, and that is for tomorrow, Wednesday, for Thursday morning, Thursday evening, and Friday morning. Then this course will finish, and then next week, we'll begin the first of two more courses that are short. By the time we finish those two courses, we we'll take a break. And that break will lead us, hopefully, to the IMF USA National Conference, August 7 and 8 next month or maybe some other time the you know i think we'll, the cost the the we'll just have a short break uh maybe short weekend for the after that conference we're going to continue now let's pray father in heaven we give you praise for your goodness for your mercy you are leading us lord into the depth of your heart we ask for your grace we ask that we do not miss any important detail Holy Spirit is all about you taking the things of Yeshua and showing us on our own. We can't say or do anything. Therefore, we pray that as many as have ordained to impact today, help them to receive your grace. Help them, O oh Father, not to miss it. Help them not to forget. The birds of the air, the enemy sends to snatch away what is sown. We pray that you will. Do a mighty work of grace to release the blood, to nullify the capacity of or any of those demons to snatch out what has been sown today. Have your way, sovereign rule of the universe. Give us grace for today. In Yeshua's mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. Uh, brothers and sisters, we thank the Lord. We have a few uh, uh, bad days. Uh, one of them is uh, Pastor Evelyn Bagoma. Uh, Pastor Evelyn Bagoma is the wife of Apostle Moses Bagoma. Uh, uh, she and her husband, they run the New Life Healing uh, Ministries International in, near Kampala. And by the grace of the Lord, you know, uh, that this couple is stepping in as the second president of IMF Uganda. They will be succeeding Apostle Paul Katungole, who uh, was the first president, and Apostle Paul is going to go into the uh, Board of Trustees, and they will take over. They're a wonderful couple. I mean, wonderful. The, she is one of three people. The whole of Uganda, only three people have done the master class, and she's one of them. And she puts her training to use. Her husband releases her to go to travel to Luero weekends to go and train pastors in Luero under the Luero Pastors Conference. She trained them in the Global School of Ministry before this COVID-19 came diligently doing that to make sure that there's a stock of people in Uganda who understand the gospel of the kingdom and the brethren oh were so excited to have a teacher because their problem was they didn't have a teacher. We also have a sister Christelle the Merite of uh, Bahamas you know whose bad is today and our brother Tony George. Uh, Tony George is a radical uh, preacher in his own right and our brother George Kaye and uh, Betty Shelley, Walter Harrison, Devon McKinsey, Liz Njoki, uh, Evangelist Narenda, uh, Kuma, and Mark Beswick. Mark Beswick is the gospel uh, musician right here in London. We thank the Lord for them all. And Elijah, we thank you for being here with us today. Thank you for your service to the body. And we're going to pray for them on the Daybreak Live.